Welcome back to MVM. Today we have a review. This one is from Stonemeyer Games Wingspan in which you are going to be building an engine of birds on three different habitats on your player board. Yeah, if you haven't heard about this thing, you've been living under a rock. We've been playing a ton of this lately. And yeah, you're going to be bringing birds into your habitat. There's three different types of, of regions in that habitat. And the person that's going to win is going to be the person who basically does the best at that and builds the best engine in those habitats. So we're gonna talk about the components first. The first thing you're gonna notice is the round board. This is gonna take place over four different rounds. There are two sides of this board. There is a green side, which is gonna be a more competitive game. And then there's gonna be a blue side where everyone can kind of contribute to the same type of goal and not be pushed out from certain things. Yeah, and this is variable as well. There's these little tiles. I think you get about eight of those and they're double-sided. So you're gonna randomly pick some of those so that each round, a different type of thing is gonna score from game to game. Each player also has eight of these cubes. These are the actions that you'll be taking on your personal player board. At the end of each one of the rounds, you're gonna be taking one of these cubes and placing it onto this round board, being graded for those particular types of bonuses according to where you fall according to that particular goal. Yeah, and that makes an interesting dynamic because you're gonna be losing those cubes as you play the game. So unlike most games, this game really tightens up at the end where you're going to have fewer options or fewer actions in your last round. So by the end of the final fourth round, you're going to only have five of those actions available. Speaking of the player board, when you look at the player board itself, you're going to notice the three different regions that we spoke about. We have the forest area, you have the, the ground area, grasslands. So speak, the grasslands, and then you have the water area. These are going to designate the different types of birds. There's 170 unique birds in this game. And they're gonna be denoted by these particular cards. Every single one of these cards is going to have the region that that bird can live in. And they can be just one singular region or they could occupy multiple different regions. Also on these, they're going to show you the type of resource or food that this bird needs in order to come into that habitat. There's five different types of resources or food that you're gonna be able to collect through the course of the game. Yeah, and there's a couple other things on the bird cards themselves, just to go over the anatomy here. All of them are gonna have some points next to this feather. The feather is the symbol for points. Some of these birds have zero, some of them have up to eight, maybe even nine, I think. Then there's going to be the nest type of the bird. That's just underneath the points. The birds are gonna have all sorts of different nests. These are gonna key into those scoring tiles depending on what comes out. And then right below that, there are a few little icons representing eggs. Part of this game is laying eggs and those eggs have to be stored on the birds in your habitat. So this one, for instance, can hold four eggs. Some of them can't hold any, some of them might hold one. A couple other important things to note about the birds is that in the top, of course, is the name of that bird. It's also gonna have the technical or biological yeah. name for that bird as well. And that's gonna play into some of the bonus cards that you can score at the end of the game. There's two other places that you need to know in the card. On the bottom, it's gonna represent one of three different special abilities. There's cards that are going to have some kind of keyed ability the moment that they're played into one of the different regions. There's cards that are going to take some kind of special action each time you key that region. And then there's another kind of card that can take place or key off of other players taking actions in their regions and where your bird lives. The final thing is this down here, and this is the wingspan of that bird from which the game gets its name. The wingspan is the is going to be important for a variety of different birds that can, are basically predators that can eat other types of birds. Yeah, it's really cool. A lot of this information you might look at and think, well, that's just sort of flavor text. And there is a little flavor text at the bottom, which is actually kind of nice trivial facts, but that wingspan comes into play a lot more than you'd think. A couple other components you need to know about, as we've been mentioning, there's bonus cards. Players are gonna be collecting these bonus cards not only at the start of the game, but also throughout the game. These are things that you can score at the end of the game for having different types of card combinations. You're also gonna have five different dice and the bird feeder over there. Those are the resources that you're gonna be gathering or the food that you're gonna be gathering through the course of the game. And then of course you have all these beautiful colored eggs. These are eggs you're gonna be laying from one of the different places or locations on your board to place on your birds to score you victory points for every single one you have at the end of the game. Yeah, I mean, that pretty much covers all of the components. Of course, there's all these little food tokens as well that match the dice in the bird feeder. But the game is incredibly, we say this all the time, but this game is so easy to play because it's very well structured and there's just a handful of different things that you can do on your turn. Right, so to start the game, every player is gonna be given five random birds and two random bonus cards and one of each of the five different food types in the game. And from that, they're gonna decide how many of those cards they wish to keep. They can only keep one of their bonus cards, so the other one they're gonna discard. And then they can keep all five of those uh, starting 
bird cards in their hand. However, for every one they keep, they have to get rid of one of their resources back to the bank. So you could start with all five birds, but no resources. Or you could start with no birds and all five of your resources. It's completely up to you. Yeah, it can be a tricky decision because you can, you're can you looking at all these birds and you think, oh, I want to keep all of these. But you definitely want to have some food so you can get some birds played. So typically, someone's going to keep maybe two, maybe three bird cards at the beginning, and as, as well as a couple pieces of food. All right, so starting with the first player, they're going to take one of their action cubes, and they're going to decide one of four actions. And one of four actions will be that way throughout the entire game. The first thing they could do is they could place their cube right on here on play a bird. And this allows them to take one of the cards from their hand and play it into one of the different regions on their player board. To do so, there's a couple things they have to pay attention to. Number one, it has to match up with the right type of region. As we said, you have the forest region, the grassland region, and the water region. So it has to go to that particular habitat. Number two, you have to pay the type of food that that bird needs back to the bank from your personal supply. And the third thing that happens is anytime you place one of these cards, it has to be the next available place in that region. The first place in each of these different areas is free. There's no other additional cost. However, as you start placing things in a new region, you have to look above the top of the board because that's going to require eggs from anywhere on your board back to the supply. So you have to give up some of your victory points in order to place that bird in one of those regions. Yeah, it kind of forces you to sort of spread around your actions. You can't just continually play birds because it eventually you are going to have to lay eggs. It's also important to note that a lot of these birds don't require just one of the regions. Some of them can in inhabit any one of the three regions, so it gives you some flexibility. The final thing you do when you play a bird is also check to see if there is a when played ability on it. These are the cards that don't have a brown or a pink stripe, but really just a white background to their action. When you do that, these do a variety of different things and you'll get that right then. The next thing you can do on your turn is to gain food. This operates like the next two options as well. But you're going to be looking at the row that you place in. And when you gain food, you're going to look over here at the first open space, the first space that doesn't have a bird card, basically, and take that action. In this instant, you're going to actually get two food. When you do that, you're going to take two die out of the bird feeder and then take the corresponding token. Now, it should be noted, when you take food from the bird feeder, if there's ever all of the same food type, you can always take all of the dice at that point and re-roll them. Even if it's just one die left, you can take the dice and re-roll them, hopefully to get the food that you're looking for. And then in this space, optionally, as well as the second space, you can trade in a card from your hand to get an additional food. So all of the economies at play here work off of each other. The next possible space you can go to is to lay eggs. This is going to allow you to take eggs from the supplies and place them on birds. These can be on any birds anywhere in your habitat. Doesn't matter the region, but you have to make sure that it doesn't go past the capacity of what that bird can hold. Also, you can pay any extra food tokens at some of the spots in order to gain one extra egg. Yeah, and you should note, these eggs are different colors, but that has no meaning to the gameplay, at least not yet. They're all just eggs. Right. The next and the last thing you could do is to draw bird cards. It's in the water area. When you draw bird cards, it's going to work like the other two. You're going to go to the first open space and draw either a card or two cards. And in this row, you can discard an egg to take an additional card. Now, it should be noted, we didn't talk about this for any of these three options, but once you do that, you're also going to go back and trigger every bird card that has the brown stripe on it from right to left on your board. Mm -hmm. So it builds this engine that you fire off from right to left every time you use that particular action. And it also needs to be noted that the pink stripes can enact on other players' turns if they're in your own region. And they all depend upon very specific text on those cards. Some of them key off very particular things that they could enact on their turn, which allow that bird to fire off on their turn. However, you can only do that once per round. So if multiple people key that off of your pink bird, you can only do it once. Yeah, and we've glossed over a lot of the details here. We'll talk about some of them, but this is the overall structure of the game. Some of the things to note also are the birds. When you're drawing cards, you have this display of three birds that are face up at all times. When you draw cards, if you're drawing multiple cards, you can take two of those, or one from there and one from the top of the deck, yep. or any combination thereof. You just need to know that once you take one of these, it doesn't refill until the very end of your turn. One other thing you need to know, anytime you're paying for birds when you play a bird action, you can trade in any two food tokens to make any one food token that you may not have. It's not super stringent. If you have a lot of food, you can start churning those out to be able to get the food tokens that are required in order to play that particular bird. 
Now, at the end of every single one of the rounds, you're going to be graded for the different scoring tiles. Each of these scoring tiles is going to be different, and you're going to look at your board to see how well you do. You're going to be marked in each of these locations, and those cubes will stay out there for the next round. So, as we said at the very beginning, as the game progresses through each of the rounds, you have less and less actions to do the game. So, it winds down really fast, and the game tempo starts to go up. Yeah, and this is also where you can score points throughout the game and play strategically. You might sacrifice the first round knowing that, for instance here, I'm not going to have a lot of birds in my water area, but I might go ahead and start working on some of the later goals so that I can secure the top position in those rounds. At the end of the game, you're going to tally up all your points. You're going to get all the points here based on your position on each of these different scoring tracks. Each of your birds that you have placed in your habitat are going to score points depending upon what is on that particular bird itself. Each of one of your bonus cards is going to score depending upon the range of the conditions met on your board. And then every single one of your eggs and every single one of your tucked cards are going to score one victory point. Tucked cards come from birds that are able to eat other birds. And there's a lot of cards that will allow you to tuck cards underneath some of these predator type birds. Yeah, and in addition to that, just like the tuck cards, there's also some birds that store food yeah. on them. And those food that are cached on the bird cards are also each worth a point. All right, so that was long. Let's actually talk about a review. There's a lot of great things yeah. to like about this game. And you know what? This could go on for probably 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> so I'm going to keep things very, very short. The first thing I want to talk about is the engine building and then the number of cards. This is a great fast engine builder that doesn't require a lot of explanation of yeah. it. There's so many different cards in here and each of these cards is completely unique. And when I say completely unique, everyone has a unique bird name, everyone has a unique cost. Your engine that you're building with that many different cards, you're gonna have a different experience every time that you play. It's really cool. Oh yeah, I mean, speaking of different experience, you're just gonna have a different experience from the birds that you see. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's 170 cards. I've played this, I don't know, five, six, seven, I don't know how many times now. And I'm still playing it and pulling out birds that, and saying, I've never seen this one before. Yeah. And like we said, a lot of them do some similar things, but we don't want to overstate that. They do all feel very unique. While some of the powers are somewhat similar, all of that other information can be quite different. They can be high point values. They can take different types of food. There can be cards that are very easy to play that don't give you the lo a lot in the way of points or uh, actions, but you're able to fill up your habitat and potentially use those engines over and over. Also, I've seen engines in my first couple games that I thought I'd stick with, and then I inevitably play a game with someone and they use those pink cards that I have t typically stayed away from. But then I've wanted to after I've played because they're doing stuff on everyone else's turns, which is really efficient because they're getting some things while they're not playing, which is a huge thing in any engine builder. The last thing I'll say positive, because I know you want to touch on the theme itself, is the components. This game is yeah. absolutely stunningly beautiful. The components are high grade quality. The backs of these look like leather, like bird watching books. Yeah. It's really beautiful. It's got its own little game tray that holds all the cards. All of these have trays that hold the components. The birdhouse is super thematic. The artwork's fantastic. It's just a really, really well produced game. Yeah, I've said this before, but these bird cards, they remind me of those little index cards when I was a kid. When you yeah. go through, they look like really cool, informative, encyclopedic entries for birds. And it's just this beautiful, beautiful, clean design. And like what you said about the birdhouse, one of the things, I'll, I'll, I'll say a good and a bad on the birdhouse before I get on the theme. I love the way this works, and it's not just a dice tower. It does really make a difference in terms of how some of the things work and how some of the birds work. One criticism is it is a little difficult at times to pour these dice into the back sure. of this thing, but that is a minor, minor criticism. Yeah. Uh, so one of my big things with this game is the theme. The theme is fantastic. Did I care about birds in any particular way before I played this game? <laughs> no, not really. But when you play this game, it's hard not to really get into the theme. And I'll, I'll tell you why. These birds look beautiful, but that's just half of it. A lot of these birds act mechanically in the game in a way that just makes sense Thematically. for yeah. birds. Yeah. Like Jeremy said earlier, there's predatory birds that when they trigger, you're going to take a card blindly off the top of the deck. And if it's a smaller bird, effectively, you get to tuck that card because it just got eaten by an eagle. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another one where you're going to roll some of the dice that are out of the uh, tray to see how many uh, rodents you get. There's and it's an that... owl and it collects the rodents yeah. because it's grabbing all the mice. A lot of really yeah. cool things like that. And the last thing I'll say about the components as well, yeah. these eggs are probably an early contender for Component. like joyful component of the year. Yeah. They're just, they, they look like little candies. They remind me of those robin eggs and they're 
and they're flattened on one side so you can actually set them upright on your board. The game is just a joy to play with, without a doubt. Right. All right, so let's get into the negatives. And there's not a whole lot, and this is really just nitpicking on my sure. part. I do feel like some of these birds are just more powerful than other birds. If you start getting a, a giant hand at the beginning of the game of all birds that have these repeating actions, the brown actions that you can just keep taking over and over, and another player has just the ones that are when played and they can't draw into them or there's none that appear at the right time, you can build some pretty spectacular engines and there's nothing really that you've done other than collect those type of birds. Yeah, it, there is obviously with this many cards, there's some randomness in what birds come out and there's yeah. not really a significant way of washing this and getting the birds uh, that you need. So if your engine that you're going with at the beginning of the game kind of lines up with the cards you're getting, you're going to have a little bit of a leg up for sure. That's that's the only negative I have. I mean, <laughs> really, this game is spectacular. Yeah, I absolutely. This game is 100% Man vs. Meeple approved. Yeah. We've had a blast playing it. I think I've personally played this more than any other game this year so far. Uh, and I think it's not quite out yet. I think it's coming out in March, and mm -hmm. then they've, got, they've already got like three print runs done, and they'll probably have another. So definitely look for this when it hits stores. So that is Wingspan. It is a one to five player game. Also has solo rules if you're interested in that. If you guys have any questions about the game, make them in the comments below. Subscribe to us, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and even follow us now on Instagram. And we will catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.